Section 2 of the Spiritual Maxims of Brother Lawrence. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. Of Necessary Practices for Attaining to the Spiritual Life. That practice that is alike the most holy, the most general, and the most needful is the practice of the presence of God. It is the schooling of the soul to find its joy in his divine companionship, holding with him at all time, and at every moment humble and loving, converse, without set rule or stated method, in all time of our temptation and tribulation, in all time of our dryness of soul, and disrelish of God, yes, even when we fall into unfaithfulness and actual sin. We should apply ourselves unceasingly to this one end, to so rule all our actions that they be little acts of communion with God. But they must not be studied, they must come naturally from the purity and simplicity of the heart. We must do all things thoroughly and soberly, without impetuosity or precipitancy, which denotes a mind undisciplined. We must go about our labours quietly, calmly and lovingly entreating him to prosper the works of our hands by thus keeping heart and mind fixed on god we shall bruise the head of the evil one and beat down his weapons to the ground when we are busied or meditating on spiritual things even in our time of set devotion whilst our voice is rising in prayer we ought to cease for one brief moment, as often as we can, to worship God in the depth of our being, to taste him though it be in passing, to touch him as it were by stealth. Since you cannot but know that God is with you in all you undertake, that he is at the very depth and centre of your soul, why should you not pause an instant from time to time, in your outward business, and even in the act of prayer, to worship him within your soul, to praise him, to entreat his aid, to offer him the service of your heart, and to give him thanks for all his loving kindness and tender mercies. What offering is there more acceptable to God than thus throughout the day to quit the things of outward sense and to withdraw to worship him within the secret places of the soul? Besides, by so doing, we destroy the love of self, which can subsist only amongst the things of sense, and of which these times of quiet retirement with God rids us well nigh unconsciously. In very truth, we can render to God no greater or more signal proofs of our trust and faithfulness than by thus turning from things created to find our joy, though for a single moment in the creator yet think not that i counsel for you to disregard completely and forever the outward things that are around us that is impossible prudence the mother of the virtues must be your guide yet i am confident that it is a common error amongst religious persons to neglect this practice of ceasing for a time that which they are engaged upon to worship God in the depth of their soul, and to enjoy the peace of brief communion with him. This digression has been long, and yet it seemed to me the matter demanded such. These acts of worship are to be prompted and guided by faith. We must unfeignedly believe that God is in very fact within our souls and that we must worship him, and love him, and serve him in spirit, and in truth, that he sees all, and unto him all hearts are open, our own, and those of all his creatures, that he is self-existent, whilst it is in him that all his creatures live, and move, and have their being, that his perfection is infinite, and sovereign, and demands the full surrender of ourselves, our souls, and bodies. In simple justice we owe him all our thoughts and words, and actions. Let us see to it that we pay our debt. Necessity is laid upon us to examine ourselves with diligence, to find out what are the virtues that we chiefly lack, and which are the hardest for us to acquire. 
we should seek to learn the sins that do most easily beset us, and the times and occasions when we do most often fail. In the time of struggle we should have recourse to God, with perfect confidence, abiding steadfast in the presence of His Divine Majesty. In lowly adoration we should tell out before Him our griefs and our failures, asking Him lovingly for the succour of His grace. And in our weakness we shall find in Him our strength. End of section 2